Welcome to Medicare. What's next? Turning 65 and going on to Medicare is a big deal. For most individuals, this will be the very first time eligible for Medicare and watching this will ensure that you don't make any mistakes. Medicare calls this the seven month initial enrollment period. Some people get Medicare Part A hospital insurance and Medicare Part B medical insurance automatically and other people have to sign up for it. This step-by-step -step process will focus on those that need to enroll into Medicare A and B and do not get it automatically. Having to enroll in Medicare A and B can be one of the more stressful things because unfortunately, there are no clear instructions or directions on exactly what to do or how to apply online. There are no videos or tutorials that show the entire online application process from A to Z for enrolling into Medicare A and B until now. Here at Healthcare Solutions Direct, you are going to get a never before seen behind the scenes look at the entire step-by-step -step process on exactly how to enroll yourself online for your Medicare A and B. You will also see real customer examples of what to look for in the mail after you complete your online enrollment, confirmation emails and letters from Social Security, and exactly how to pay your monthly Medicare premium bill. Social Security gives the option to start collecting retirement benefits as early as age 62. The retirement age to receive full benefits though is now over the age 66. Nearly 47% of Social Security recipients do take their retirement benefits before reaching the milestone age of 65. If you are receiving Social Security benefits at least four months prior to your 65th birthday, you will be automatically enrolled into Medicare by Social Security and there's nothing that you need to do about it. Social Security will automatically mail you your red, white, and blue Medicare card about three and a half to four months prior to your 65th birthday. Your Medicare will start on the first day of your 65th birth month. If you happen to be born on the first of the month, your Medicare will actually start on the first of the previous month. The reason that almost half of retirees that are turning 65 are automatically enrolled in Medicare A and B is because Medicare does have a monthly premium. Medicare Part A hospitals typically free to everyone that turns 65 due to payroll tax deductions during their working years. The Part B medical though, does carry a monthly premium. The standard premium for 2021 is $148.50 a month. This premium is deducted from the Social Security retirement check starting on the 65th birth month. This is the main reason that those who are drawing Social Security prior to age 65 are automatically enrolled into Medicare. Social Security has a means now to collect Medicare's monthly premium. For those that are not collecting Social Security retirement benefits prior to age 65 and are waiting to collect the full retirement benefits when they are fully eligible at age 66 or later, you will find the following instructions to sign up for Medicare A and B online extremely useful and very helpful. We recommend that you sign up as soon as you are 90 days away from your 65th birthday. This will allow enough time for Social Security to process your Medicare A and B application for the effective date and get your paperwork to set up the payment plan for your Medicare premium. It also takes about three to four weeks to receive your Medicare card in the mail once you've applied. So the earlier you enroll in your 90 day window, the better it is for you. If you have any questions during this process, please do not hesitate to call us toll free at 844-427-7526. Our agents are standing by ready to assist you in anything that you may need when it comes to your Medicare. Let us now begin the exciting step-by-step -step process on revealing exactly what you will see behind the scenes and need to do when you begin enrolling online with Social Security for your Medicare A and B card. The very first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to Medicare's official website, which is Medicare.gov. Once you get to Medicare.gov, there's a button in the left-hand corner that says Sign Up Change Plans. You're going to want to go ahead and click on the Sign Up Change Plans button. It's going to take you to this next screen and you can see it says apply for Medicare online. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and click on apply for Medicare online. Once you do that, it's gonna redirect you to Social Security's website and you're gonna scroll down to about the middle of the page and you're gonna see a big button that says apply for Medicare only. So you're gonna go ahead and click on the apply for Medicare only button. Once you do that, it's gonna take you to the benefits application terms of service. You're gonna check off, I understand and agree to the above statements and then you're gonna hit the next button. It's then going to take you to apply and complete. So 
The application they say will take between 10 to 30 minutes to complete. We see though that on average it takes less than 10 minutes as you'll see when we go through this, um, through this video. So you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna click on start a new application. Now if you're, during, you're in the application and something comes up and you have to walk away, they will give you a re-entry number that you can write down and you can come back to this page and return to a saved application process. But right now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click on start a new application. It's gonna ask who is completing this application. So you're gonna check off, I'm applying for myself. It's gonna ask, do you have a My Social Security account? Now you are going to need a My Social Security account in order to apply for your Medicare because Social Security handles the payments for Medicare for the monthly premium, as well as handling the Medicare cards as well. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead, and, go ahead and, uh, and click yes. Now, if you don't have a My Social Security account, it's no big deal if you click no, it's going to still redirect you to the same exact landing page whether you answer it yes or no. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click yes. It'll take us to this landing page. So if you need to create your own My Social Security account, you can click on the left there on the create new account and then allow you to go ahead and create your My Social Security account. If you already have a My Social Security account, you come right over here uh, to the right and put in your username and password and sign in. But let's say that you forgot your username. So you'll go ahead and click on forgot username it will then ask you your email address, your social security number, and your date of birth to verify who you are, and then it'll hit, you'll hit next. It will then pre-populate the username in there for you. So it'll say your username has been entered for you below if everything matched up with what social security had on file for you. Then you'll go ahead and put in your password and you'll hit sign in. But let's say that the password that you entered does not match up, does not verify. So a button will come up at the top there. Uh, we cannot uh, verify the information that you provide. So you can try to go ahead and put another password you think it might be and hit sign in. If that doesn't work, then you'll hit forgot password. It'll then ask you again for your username, your social security, and your date of birth. You'll go ahead and hit next. It's then gonna ask you password reset questions that you had been asked during your My Social Security sign up. In this case, if for some reason you can't remember, you can click I can't remember my answers. But this particular individual was asked, what is the middle name of your mother? In what city or town did your mother and father meet? And what is the name of your favorite childhood friend? So they went and filled that out and they hit next. It's then going to verify who you are before you're able to reset your password. And it's gonna send you a text with a security code. So you're gonna go ahead and click yes, this uh, cell phone number is correct. If it's no longer valid, you can change it and then hit next. It's then going to text you a security code you're gonna enter that security code right in that field, and then you're gonna hit submit security code. Once you do that, it's gonna let you go ahead and reset your password. So you put your new password and confirm your new password, and then hit next. It's then gonna say you successfully changed your password. So go ahead and please write down your username and password in a safe place or save it on your computer, and then go ahead and hit next. Now you're ready to go ahead and start your application for your Medicare A and B. It's gonna say you successfully created or signed in to your My Social Security account. The information about the applicant yourself is going to be here. Your first name, middle name, and last name is gonna be pretty popular. If that's not what appears on your Social Security card, you can change it right here. Your Social Security number will already be pre-populated. Your date of birth will also be pre-populated in there. And then it's gonna ask for the gender. It's gonna ask two other questions. Are you blind or do you have low vision or even with glasses or contacts? You'll answer that question. And then it's gonna say during the last 14 months, have you been unable to work because of illness, injuries, or conditions that have lasted or are expected to last at least 12 months or can be expected to result in death? You answer that question right there and then you'll hit the next button. It will then at that point have identified who you are and as you can see at the very top, you'll see tabs. You'll see the identification tab that we're in right now that still needs to be completed. There's a general tab, the other benefits, the remarks and options, and the review and sign. So we've gotta get through those tabs to get to the review and sign. And then on to the right in this section, you can see that we've completed the applicant identification. And you can see we're now at the contact information. So since they've gone ahead and now identified who you are, it's gonna say contact information for, and your name will be listed there. You're gonna go ahead and make sure the street address, the city, the state, and the zip code are all correct. It's gonna ask, do you live at this address? You'll answer that question. And then it's gonna ask you for your daytime phone number and what is the best time to call. So go ahead and enter in your daytime number. I would put my mobile number in there um, because if they do have a question, they can call you on your, your cell phone. Uh, this person went ahead and said that uh, 9 a.m. to noon was the best time for them to be reached. 
you'll go ahead and enter your, your email address, confirm your email address. They'll ask what language you prefer for the application. So you'll go ahead and select that and then you'll hit next. You'll see now that we're on the birth and citizenship part of the section. So it's going to ask place of birth. So the city and the state that you were born in, if you're born outside the United States, you would click other. It's going to ask, are you a U.S. citizen? You'll answer that question and it'll ask type of citizenship. You'll go ahead and answer that question as well. And then you'll hit the next button. It's now going to ask you about your Medicare information. So it's going to ask, do you wish to apply for Medicare only, but not for monthly retirement cash benefits? So remember, you're applying online right now because you're holding off on your monthly retirement cash benefits at 65. And so you're going to go ahead and click yes. I wish to apply for Medicare, but I'm going to hold off on my retirement uh, benefits. It's then going to ask, are you already enrolled in Medicare under a social security number other than your own? So if you were on Medicare under someone else's social security number or spouse or someone else, then at that point you would click yes. But in this particular situation, we're applying for ourselves under our own social security information. So we'd go ahead and click no and then hit next. It's then going to give us the re-entry number. So it's really important that you write this re-entry number down, print this page. So if for some reason you had to walk away before you completed the entire uh, application, you could use that re-entry number to come back in and everything be safe for you. So we'll go ahead and go ahead and uh, hit uh, next. It's now going to take us over into the general tab, as you can see, and you've got in this section, health insurance information is going to ask about group plan. We'll talk about that. So it's going to say Medicare coverage for your name will be there. It says you want to enroll in Medicare Part B. You're going to go ahead and click yes right here. If for any reason you are not wanting to enroll Medicare Part B, just wanted your Part A, you would click no right here. But in this case, we're applying for our Medicare A and B, so we'll click yes. It's gonna ask other health insurance coverage. Are you receiving Medicaid, state health insurance? We're gonna go ahead and answer that question, then we're gonna hit next. Then it's going to ask about group health plan information. So are you covered under a group health plan? So we're gonna pause here for a second. In this particular instance, this individual did not have a group health plan. They were no longer working, they were retired. So it's very important for this question right here. If, you do, if you're no longer working and you're not covered by a group health plan, you're gonna answer this question no and move forward. The reason that Social Security is asking this question right here is because if you are still working and covered under the employer's group health insurance, and that is going to continue after 65, you technically can, can delay your Part B, um, Medicare Part B, and sign up at a later date during what's called a special enrollment period. So if you are still working, covered under your employer group coverage, or you're covered under a spouse's group uh, coverage, and they are still working, you can go ahead and delay your Medicare Part B. A lot of individuals that are still working and covered under their group insurance plan from the company they're working for or a spouse's group insurance plan from the company they're working for still do elect to go ahead and sign up for their Medicare for two reasons. It could be that the Medicare coverage is going to be better than the coverage that they're being offered through their employer, or it could be more cost effective for them to go ahead and get on Medicare versus staying on their employer group health plan. So in this case here, um, if you did have group health insurance coverage through your current employment, as I mentioned, you could technically delay your group health insurance plan, uh, your Medicare Part B insurance and sign up for it at a later date during a special enrollment and not have to worry about any type of penalty. So um, if your group health insurance plan is based on your current employment, that's a key thing, current employment, you may not need Medicare Part B when you turn 65. You'll get what's called a special enrollment period to sign up for Part B later without a penalty after the employment or group health plan coverage ends. If you qualify, you can sign up for Part B anytime while you're covered by an employer or union group health plan based on the current employment or you can enroll in Medicare Part B anytime within eight months after the employment ends or the group health plan coverage end, whichever happens first. So you'll have what's called a special enrollment period. So you may enroll anytime in Medicare 65 or over with a special enrollment period based on group health on their or spouse's current employment. That's the key right there. It has to be your current employment. So in order to obtain a special enrollment period, you must also submit two forms. You have to submit form CMS L56, which is the uh, request for employment information, uh, CMS L564, 
and the CMS 40B application for enrollment in Medicare Part B medical insurance. Now, we do have those forms that we can get to you if you need us, so please contact us toll free at 844-427-7526 and we can get those, uh, those forms uh, over to you. Uh, the forms look like this. The first form is a request for employment information that would be filled out by your employer um, and uh, showing that uh, the reason you had delayed your Medicare Part B was because you were covered uh, under their uh, group insurance, you were still working for them, um, and uh, they would go ahead and fill this out and, uh, and sign it and give that back to you. And then also there's an application for enrollment in Medicare Part B. This is one that you would fill out yourself just basically saying that you wanted your Medicare Part B to start. And you take these two forms and upload it to Social Security um, asking for your Part B. Now, during your initial enrollment period, which is what we're talking about right now, during the initial enrollment period, you do not need any documentation at all. So within the seven month uh, initial enrollment period, you can sign up for your A and B with absolutely no uh, documentation required. So we're at the remarks and options tab. So it's going to say, please provide any additional information or remarks you wanna send with this application. So this individual put down, currently have COBRA coverage from previous employer, wanting Medicare A and B to start on November 1st, 2020. And they went ahead and hit next. It's now going to let that individual review the information that they entered. So you're able to review and edit the applicant identification, edit the applicant's contact information. You can go ahead and edit the birth and citizenship information. You can edit the Medicare election um, as well. You can view the re-entry number right here. For some reason, you hadn't wrote it down. Um, you can go ahead and edit the health insurance information and edit the group health plan information if you needed to. And then finally, be able to go ahead and edit the remarks. So now we're at the end. It says, congratulations, you're just about ready to complete your application for Medicare insurance. So you're gonna go ahead and check off, I agree with the electronic signature agreement above. It's going to have a, a caution. You will no longer be able to change this information once you continue. So you'll go ahead and hit submit now. And then it's gonna say, thank you for applying for Medicare online. So once you get to this page, you are done. There's nothing else that you need to do. You're gonna have a confirmation number right here please print this as your receipt. So you have a copy of this or make sure that that number is in a safe place. They can contact you with any updates or questions that they may have about your information. But for right now, you are all done. Everything has been submitted for the application for your Medicare A and B. You will get an email as well. They'll say, check the status of your application. So it'll say, we have received your application for benefits. Thank you for using our online services to conduct your business. You can check the status of your application by going back into your My Social Security account. We will contact you by telephone or by mail with any updates or questions we have about your information. So don't be surprised if they do call you within 24 hours to ask you some questions, if there was something that they still had a question about on the application that you had submitted. So if everything is in order and there's no issues at all, shortly thereafter, you can go ahead and get back into your My Social Security account and you will have a Social Security Administration benefit verification letter. They will mail this to you, but this will also be available online in your My Social Security account that you can also print off. So it'll show that the date of birth that you entered is also the same that is shown on their records. It will then tell you that you're entitled to your hospital insurance under Medicare. It'll also tell you that you're entitled for your Medicare, uh, your medical insurance under Medicare, the Part B and it's going to go ahead and give you your Medicare claim number, which everything is filed through. You may use this number to get medical services while waiting for your Medicare card. So um, you can actually use this letter um, to, until your Medicare card actually arrives in the mail. Remember, the Medicare card usually takes about three to four weeks to actually receive in the, uh, in the mail. So uh, you will receive an envelope that looks very similar to this one. It's gonna come from the Department of Health and Human Services. So. You'll see the back of it says official information from Medicare. You'll go ahead and you'll open that uh, letter up and inside will be your Medicare, uh, your Medicare card. So you'll see your claim number on there. You'll see your hospital part A and medical part B with your coverage dates. You can go ahead and, uh, and pop that off of there, put that in your wallet or your purse, and it can be used obviously for hospital and medical services with uh, Medicare. So as we mentioned, Previously, there is a monthly charge for the Part B. The standard monthly premium for Part B is $148.50 starting in 2021. So in order to go ahead and pay that $148.50, uh, $148.50, um, 
Social Security will mail you out what's called a Medicare premium bill. And that Medicare premium bill will look like this. This is a real customer example of a Medicare premium bill that they received in the mail to go ahead and pay their Medicare Part B. You'll see up in the right hand corner, it says Part B first bill. Um, and they'll, they'll, they'll bill you on a quarterly basis. So that'll be a quarterly amount. You can go ahead and send them a check or money order for that quarterly amount. You can also detach the bottom and in, enter in your credit card information, sign it and mail that in. We highly recommend that you sign up for Medicare Easy Pay, as you can see by the arrow there. The Medicare Easy Pay allows you to go ahead and set it up through your checking or savings account and they'll actually go ahead and draft it monthly instead of doing it on a quarterly basis. That way you can set it and forget it and not have to worry about, about that. You can go ahead and call Social Security directly at 1-800-772-1213. Uh, 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 um, and they can go ahead and uh, process it for you uh, over the phone. Now it could take some time to get through to Social Security. Um, so in this case, you can go ahead and, uh, and call us and we can get you that form that uh, we can get over to you right away to go ahead and, uh, and fill that information out and send it in. But you can also go to your Medicare costs under medicare.gov, ways to pay Part A and Part B premiums. You can download the form right there as well. So after your form is processed, when it's sent in, two things will happen each month. You'll get a Medicare premium bill stating this is not a bill every single month, letting you know that the premium will be deducted from your bank account. You'll, they'll also deduct your premium from your bank account, usually on the 20th of each month. It will appear on your bank statement as an automated clearinghouse ACH transaction. So they're only going to go ahead and draft that payment once a month. If your bank rejects it or returns your premium deduction, they will uh, go ahead and send you a letter with instruction on how to make that uh, direct payment uh, to, uh, to Medicare. So um, we are uh, now done going through the step-by-step -step process on how to enroll online into your Medicare A&B. We wanna really thank you for taking the time to watch this. And we hope this has been extremely useful and helpful to you in your Medicare journey. Once you have your Medicare claim number, it's also extremely important to create a personal mymedicare.gov account. So unfortunately, there's no clear instructions or directions on how to do that either and many on Medicare overlook this very useful tool. Please be sure to watch our never before seen behind the scenes look at the step-by-step -step process on exactly how to roll online into your own personal mymedicare.gov account. What this will do is it's gonna allow you the ability to track in almost real time your Medicare claims, allow you to view your insurance coverage, as well as print or order another Medicare card right from the convenience of your own personal Medicare account. Again, thank you so much for your time. And again, we look forward to being your trusted partner in your Medicare journey. Please don't hesitate to call us as our agents are standing by ready to assist you in anything that you may need when it comes to your Medicare. Thanks again.